What a blessing it is to be in the house of the Lord on the love of Lord's day. It is the day that the Lord has made. The Lord is the only one who can make a day. The only one who can make a sun and let it shine. The only one that can make a sky and let clouds hang in it and not fall to the ground. I was walking the other day, Brother Davis, and I looked up in the sky and I saw all of those weightless, cotton ball looking matters hanging in the atmosphere. And I thought scientifically how much water is contained in them. And yet, while the gravitational pull of the earth keeps us on the ground and not floating around in the air, it's amazing how God is able in his own way and wisdom to maintain clouds with water in them. And at his own time, he can allow them to be wrung out and drop water on the ground, but they never fall to the ground. You still ain't called what I said. I said all that stuff to say this. In light of all that you have faced and you are dealing with, have you not stopped to think how great God is in the midst of your situations and your circumstances? I know there's lots of children in here who have no problem telling him thank you for another day. He woke you up, kept you alive. If you're able to stand to your feet with me, I'm just going to ask that you would stand to your feet with me, if you will. Thank you, Lord.
roof over your head. Breath in your body and strength is well. That's redeemed of the law. Okay. I know it's early, but even early, even the birds in the morning were chirping to his glory. He provided worms for them and bread for me and you. Somebody who has come in the house today. I know it's been a long seven days, but you're still here. Yeah, you yeah. still got some aches and pains, but yeah, you're still here. Yeah. I know that you're going through some things, but you're still here. I know that they're not all the way you want it to be, but praise God today. Being good to me. Oh, I'm not going to have a lot just for you. got no problem raising the hand.
no greater. If you can, I need a round word. There's another message here for us. Because now we know that God's grace has been keeping us. Yes, 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 yes. And here's why. Because the word from the book of Galatians, chapter 2, verse 20, it says, I am crucified with Christ. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, I live. Yeah. Yet, not I, but Christ lives in me. Oh, yeah. And the life which I live now, in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, yes. which lives in me. Thank you, Jesus. And gave himself for me. Mm -hmm. That's worth praising God for. Do we live in you? God is a part of all of us. You may be seen. He lives in all of us. Yeah. Do you believe that? Just singing God's grace. How good He's been to us. So that sounds like we're going to have a joyful day today. We're going to give God the glory today. Amen. Yes, we are. Amen. So right now, let's talk to Him. Let's go to Him and pray. Amen. Dear Lord, we come in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Help us. Lord, we are so thankful for your grace. We're so thankful for your mercy. You have been such a wonderful, good God to us. When we look around this world today, and all the trouble, all in the land, everywhere, but Lord, you've been watching over us. You've been yes, sir. keeping that away from us. Yes. But we want to say thank you, Lord. But we want you to know, Lord, we know you're protecting us. We know you're looking out for us. And we want to be thankful for, for what you are doing for us, Lord. We come to this house this day to praise, to glorify, and to lift your holy name. Because you have been good to us and you more than worthy. You more than worthy for what you have done for us. You kept our children safe. You kept our grandchildren safe. You keeping us safe, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Because we can be in the mix of all kinds of things that's going on in this world, Lord. Not saying, Lord, that it won't happen, but Lord, we trust you. We trust that you're going to continue to keep us covered, Lord. Yes, Lord. We're going to keep staying close as we can get to you, Lord. And I'm asking today, Lord, that you help our pastor with a word to give us this day, Lord. Help him, Lord. Give him strength in his body. Give him strength in his mind. Bless his family. Bless the friendship family. Bless all the seniors of this church, Lord. Keep watching over them. Keep them safe, Lord. Keep them safe, Lord. Let us all know, Lord, there is nothing to fear because you are in us and we are in you. And we thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for your goodness. Thank you for your mercy. Pray that we have a blessed day today. In the name of Jesus.
that's what we've come to do today. The joy of singing with expressions of appreciation. I am a preparation is glory to his name. Yeah. Come one night one. We'll sing the first, the second, the fourth stanza, and then we'll sing the chorus. As you would stand if you will, and let us sing that glorious hymn of the church together. Saved. And 
Thank you for giving us a salvation that is free but at your expense. For we ask you that the only authority that matters and that's your authority. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. While you're standing, go back with me, if you will, again to the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 13. We want to again examine verses 1 through 9 and then pick up Jesus' explanation mm -hmm. in verses 18 through 23. I pray that you brought your sermon notebooks with you. <coughs> Excuse me. I need your prayers this morning. Amen. And if you don't have your sermon notebook, we can make one available for you. But I pray that you will even take note today. And the reason why that is is because God's word never gets old or outdated. Amen. It's going to be fresher today than tomorrow's newspaper. <laughs> and I want to tell you, you're going to need the word of God in some days to come as well as now. I'll be reading out of the New American Standard Version of the Bible. Listen to the word of the Lord. That day Jesus went out of the house and was sitting by the sea. And large crowds gathered to him, so he got into a boat and sat down, and the whole crowd was sitting on the beach. Yeah. And he began to speak many things to them in parables, saying, Behold, it means take a good look, observe. The sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell beside the road, and the birds came and ate them up. Others fell on the rocky places where they did not have much soil, and immediately they sprang up because they had no depth of soil. But when the sun had risen, they were scorched because they had no root, they withered away. Others fell among the thorns. Yeah. And the thorns came up and choked them out. And others fell on a good soil and yielded a crop. Some a hundredfold, some sixty, and some thirty. Yes. He who has ears, yeah. let him hear. Mm -hmm. Verse 18 through verse 20. Mm -hmm. Jesus explains Brother Davis the parable. Mm -hmm. He writes, hear then the parable of the soil. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what has been sown in his, in his heart. Yeah. This is the one on whom seed was sown beside the road. The one on whom seed was sown on the rocky places. This is the man who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet he has no firm root in himself. Yeah. And that's not just restricted to male gender, that's to any person. Yeah. It's not gender restricted. But it's only temporary. Mm. It's only temporary. Mm. Yeah. And when affliction or persecution arises because of the word, immediately he falls away. Mm. And the one on whom the seed was sown among the thorns, this is the man or the person who hears the word, Worry of the world and the deceitfulness of wealth choke the word, and it becomes unfruitful. Yes, sir. And the one on whom seed was sown on the good soil. This is the man or the person who hears the word and understands it. <coughs> Excuse me. Pray, pray, pray. Who indeed bears fruit and brings forth some hundredfold, some sixty. Some third. You may be seated before the face of the Father. And again, we want to talk about lessons learned from the soil. Lessons learned from the soil. I need you to make sure you keep your Bibles open because we want to track and trace this text. This parable has been called the parable of the sower, but, but when you really read it, the emphasis is on the soils. While the sower does have a role in it, and that's scattering the seed, know that the soils take center stage, and this is the primary emphasis as it is told by Jesus. By and large, the message that Jesus intends to show in this parable is simply this. 
And that is, is that the condition of the soil determines the reception of the seed. I got some feedback on that. The condition of the soil determines the reception of the seed. Each of these soils represent the human heart, beloved, regarding the Word of God. And, and as I shared with you on last Sunday, each of these four soils in this parable, in some way or another, represents people, represents me and you. And the driving question is simply this, which of these soils look like you? Or which of these soils do you look like? Regarding the farming method, and the scheme or the way that the seeds were planted. It wasn't that he was riding on some tractor and doing what we see today. No, uh, the parable is not for me just in that way because we've got different methods of efficiently having farming methods. But I need you to think with me for a minute. Think about this being a picture of an early farmer. He, he, of course, he didn't have a combine to ride on. He, he wasn't using a donkey or an ox to plow. And so what was going on in terms of the planting process is that seed was to either be cast abroad by hand or it was a hole cut in a bag. And while it was carried on the sore of the farmer's shoulder, he would spread the seed the way that he would be walking. Yes. And so while we may not be able to understand or connect with Jesus' picture of the farming illustration, we do have connection and identification with the principles that Jesus is teaching in this parable. Let me momentarily rewind the tape, go back for a second, because I believe that there are there's some fresh matters that are present in what we saw last week. The first ground that Jesus identifies and tags in this text is what is known as wayside ground. Amen. And, 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 and the wayside ground, again, all of these soil types represents the heart of people or people in general. Yeah. And there are some people, wayside ground. Some of you all have never been to the country before. Uh, and so take a small trip with me. And those of us that know something about the country, you, you already there. You already see it in your mind's eye. You know that whenever there is a stretch of ground that is walked on, that is bare and open, if it's walked on over a period of time, it gets real hard. It gets almost as hard as asphalt. Yeah. There are some people who are just like this. Hardened earth, a path that symbolizes the human heart. And I need you to please give serious attention, beloved, to the details that are made known by Jesus himself. This is his allegory. This is his story. And I'm interested in hearing what Jesus has to say. How about you? Jesus says, as quickly, you need to capture this, as the seed, which is the word of God, falls on this kind of ground, where it is not receptive, it is hard, just like the human heart, he says, Watch the text. That not some other farmer is coming behind him to steal, but there's an enemy. He says, Satan takes it away as quickly as it is given. He said, why is that preaching? Because of the hardness of the soil. Because of the hardness of the heart. The seed is unable to penetrate the soil, so it just lays down. Y'all ain't walking with me. Here's an illustration, I pray that you call it. Just as the seed of God is given in this power, it lays there open. Satan swoops in, gets it. It's as though he is saying, you ain't going to do nothing with that. So I might as well get it. I'm wondering today, how many of us in this room only see church worship as something that you go to to do, but you don't consider the importance of the teaching and the preaching. Could it be that if the Lord were to make Satan anthropomorphically, physically take, take physical form. And if we were to be able to take the Sunday school lesson that was already given this morning and the sermon that will be preached, would there be any of us saying, well,
But say, let, let me have that because you ain't with nothing in it. <laughs> let, 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 me take, let me take the sermon because it's clear that the Word of God is not active in your life. This is beyond church membership. This is about relationship. Got the thinking about it. Uh, talk with Sister Oldham on the way home, and she, she made a startling insight that I'll share with you. She said, you know what's amazing? She said that it lays on top, yeah. which means that he ain't got to work hard to get it. He ain't got to scratch. See, I grew up in the South, and Brother Beck, I saw some chickens who would scratch to get a worm. Would that be emblematic of any of us today? Mm. That we just hand over because we're not interested in applying the word. Yeah. We're not interested in living. We say, well, I heard a sermon. Um, this matter of laying on top, because I got a lot to say and I got to move my train quick. It, it speaks of divine deafness resulting in failure to accept and to apply spiritual truth, the word of God. Uh, that they, 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 they will have their minds so made up and their will will be so set in their ways that when they hear the word of God, what word of God that they hear will never challenge them to do any new thinking, any new living, or go in another way. Because the bottom line is that they don't care to hear it because they don't want to hear it. And, and such people hear, and yet they refuse to listen while they are hearing. And Jesus goes on to say, I'm just trying to tell you what he's saying here, is that they don't take the message serious. It's like that old adage or that old saying, goes in one ear and comes out the other. For some, it don't even go in one ear. Satan distracts their attention by making them unable to receive the word of God. I wish I could tell you the number of Sundays that I stand here to preach and I, and I see so much activity going on. It ain't got nothing to do with the sermon. Mm -hmm. And with that being said, let's look at the second and the third soil types yeah. as told by Jesus. The second soil type identified and described by Jesus is he identifies it as rocky soil. Let me read the text. As for what was sown on the rocky ground, this is he or she who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy, but yet they don't have any root in themselves, but endures for a while. And when tribulation or persecution arises on account of the word, immediately they fall away. Let's unpack this. Jesus identifies this soil as rocky soil. Well, ideally, when we hear this automatically, we start to think that it's soil that's got a whole lot of rocks up in it. Now, now, let me help you. That, that's not what he's talking about. Can I tell you what's going on here? The idea here is that there, you've got this small layer of soil on the top. But you can't put a whole lot of trust in the top soil. Because underneath the topsoil, there's a layer of bedrock that is competing with what's on top. Lord, help me preach your word today. There are these four serious issues that's going on all at the same time that affects the promise and the possibility of the seed's potential. I wonder, are you walking with me? Stay with the text because Jesus names and identifies these four problems and all of them have a direct effect on the seed. Can I show it to you? Yes, yes, yes. The first problem with the soil, Jesus says it's shallow. Right. Mm -hmm. It has no depth of soil. That's just another way of saying that this thin layer of soil sits on top of the limestone. Mm. Now, are y'all still walking with me? Yes. Now, because there's this strap, strap, topsoil, thin, the human eye can't see what's below. Just like the human eye can't see what's below in me and you. Mm. But it is very open and visible 
to the Lord. Jesus calls it for what it is. He says it's shallow, which means that it's superficial. It's surface wise. It looks promising. But looks don't determine spiritual maturity. It looks promising. But looks don't determine how you're going to fare when the storms of life rage against you. I wonder if I have anybody praying with me. It looks promising because it's not. Because what you can't see, what I can't see, there is below. Lord, help me today. A preventer, a blocker, if you will. Uh, something unseen to the human eye that's preventing the sea from spreading its roots. Yeah. Let me ask you, what's yours? Is it your attitude? Is it your thoughts? Is it your lifestyle? Yeah. On the top, people can hear how good you talk about how much you love the church and how much you love Jesus, but let's get past surface talk. Down below, there's another layer. And that layer prevents the Word of God from having root in your life. I told the name of like it says, son, preach the gospel. He says it's, it's shallow. Yeah. The other thing that's amazing, Jesus also brings in, because it's shallow, when trouble shows up, does that sound like any of us in here? When some stuff got crazy in your life, did you go AWOL on your worship? <laughs> you see, brothers and sisters, there's one thing that is for sure. Yeah. And that is God knows the depth, D-E-P-T-H, of every single one of us in this room. Yes, yes, oh, yeah. Yes, and he knows what things are in our lives yeah. that keep us from growing like we are. Right. There's nothing wrong with the seed. No. The seed is not the problem. It is the condition that the soil is. Let me say this. You can't blame the church for why you are the way you are, why you think the way you think, why you live the way you live, why you do the. It could be you just shallow. Yeah. Let me help you to understand. The devil knows where you are shallow. He's not threatened by shallow saints. But there's a, a record I keep preaching. But then I told you this for him. So here's the second problem that Jesus identifies with this shallow soil is what lies underneath it. Yeah. Yeah. Or for us, what's inside of us. Yeah. He calls it limestone. Well, you may not have limestone in you, but do you have lies in you? Yeah. Do you have negative thinking, basement thinking? In you. Mm. <sighs> you see, <clears throat> let me take you back. In Palestine, there, there is, in this part of the country, large layers of hard clay like substance called limestone that ran through the country. And, and because it's underneath and it can't be seen from the surface, in the end, it meant a loss of promised crop. I wonder, are you seeing this, beloved? See, unlike the wayside ground in which the seed never penetrates, uh -uh. that's not the rocky soil's problem. Yeah. The problem with the rocky soil is that it's not deep enough to sustain any kind of growth mm -hmm. because underneath it, y'all catching this. Yeah. There is some stuff, there's a layer that blocks the growth of the seed. Let me ask you this since we just talking today. What things are in your life or what thing is in your life that you let stay there that blocks the word of God from having free course in your life? Could that be the problem with, with some people? 
Now they hear enough preaching, they hear enough teaching. However, the word of God never gets down deep enough in them because there are some things in their life that prevent the word of God from having any long-term growth in them. This is more than just showing up every now and then. This is more than just, I'm glad you came. But you need to understand, there's more to you being a Christian than just showing up giving some money. Uh -uh. It's a matter of a walk with the Lord. It's a matter of a lifestyle. And if you have been in Bible study, you understand that the word walk used in the Bible means daily conduct. Daily, 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 every day. Yeah. And so the question becomes, what are you and I looking like? When it comes to what God wants to see in your life, in our lives, but we got some stuff. Right. Maybe some unforgiveness is a lie and storm. You still ain't. Wake up now, ain't that boring. Maybe you got a whole lot of angel peeled up in you. How do you expect the word of God to help you to grow when you are walking around full of stuff? That ain't got nothing to do with the love of Christ. I've seen people talk about they got to leave one church and go to another. Because they ain't being fed. It's hard to put food in a closed mouth. <laughs> you going from church to church don't mean you're going to grow. You just take your mean, dissatisfied, cantankerous, angry, upset, narrow-minded self somewhere else. And as soon as the preacher says something you don't like, you're accusing them of fussing, and then you gotta move on. You just shout. <laughs> because you got some stuff under. Oh, come on, God. Come on. You ever, you ever had a conversation with somebody who, in a matter of seconds, you know something wrong? Mm. They just won't admit it. Yeah. Yeah. What's wrong with you? Nothing. Yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah. I'm good, no, you ain't. I'm all right, no, you, you can't be. You mentioned some people's name, I don't really hear it. And they might even be dead, been dead for a long time. Yeah, yeah. They, I mean, look at this, thank you, Lord. They both have opportunities. But it's not the source fault why they're in the shape they're in. As long as you keep letting anger, unforgiveness, jealousy, vindictiveness, yeah. revenge have an underneath layer in your life, don't expect spiritual growth to take place. But, hello, you know, we want God to bless us. Bless us in the shape we in, with the stuff we think and feel. There is nothing ever wrong with the seed. The seed wants to do what the seed is more than able to do. But the seed will not fight against the soil. But there's, there's another problem that Jesus mentioned. I'm just going through the text. Because he brought, brought this in. Oh, when I get the glory, I'm going to ask him. When tribulation or persecution arises on account of the word immediately, they fall away. You know, there are some people that don't take much to quit to quit Jesus. All right. All right. For some people, it don't take much for them to quit reading the Bible. It doesn't take much for them to, to quit praying. When tribulation, and that word tribulation in the original language is the Greek word thripsis. It, it, it really speaks about a difficult problem that would have mastery over the wake of y'all. This ain't sleeping time. It's hearing time. When trouble shows up, and let me help you to understand, nobody in here is so certain that sorrow and things won't show up in your life. I'm glad you came to church today. But understand this, the devil knows where all of us lives. He knows our strengths and our weaknesses. And Jesus said, when tribulation and when problems show up, you know some people who when trouble show up in them in their life, you ask them, how come you ain't in the church? Well, you know, oh, oh, no, no. It ain't time to run from the Lord's house and from the worship of God with the saints because you got some stuff going in your life. If you know anything, you ought to be coming back because it's the saints that can help you.
know. Yeah. They didn't have much earth. You give it a few more minutes to work this out. Yeah. And, yeah, and it did it did it did spring up. Let me show, show this show this to you. Seed starts sprouting. Get that limestone. Couldn't penetrate it. And so it did a boomerang back up. And so when it came back up, look at what it had to contend with. Yeah. It got scorched. Yeah. Yeah. Because it had no root. And exposed roots, ain't hurt you with me? Yeah. Will burn up. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. They will die. Yeah. Yeah. They will wither away. Here's the third problem. Moving on. Jesus says, not if the son. He said, we. Yeah. 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 you walking with me. Yeah. He didn't say it might. He says, we. Yeah. And that's, a, that, that's an unpredictable moment for all of us in here. You don't know when you're going to get sick. You don't know when trouble is going to come. You don't know when sorrow is going to show up. I thought I had somebody to help me here. You don't know when the collapse is going to occur. You don't know when some things are going to I'm telling you, they are going to show up. And when the son of those problems show up, it ain't time to walk away. Because if the word of God was in you, you said, I got something to hold. Yeah. I don't like to just hold my cup, but I ain't giving up. I know some stuff is hard right now, but they that wait on the Lord. For those that can easily sleep, they will say, let me have it because you ain't going to sleep no way. <laughs> but I want you to know that there's some sun coming up in all of our lives between now and next week. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sun comes up. All right, all right. Now understand, there's a process going on because it not only affects the top layer, it heats up the limestone. Yeah. It prevents the root of the seed from penetrating any deeper. Beloved, here it is. All of us are going to have some moments in life when the sun comes up. Yeah. Right now. Amen. Yeah. I'm talking about those moments when the heat is on. And the difference between going on and giving up is determined by whether we've got firm root in the word of God or whether we got limestone issues that are barriers or prevent us to the word of God in our lives. Here's point number four for those who's going to take a note. Problem is, Jesus says, they have no root. The key our Lord gives us here is that they have no root in themselves. This is what is determined or called a shallow life, a life without the word of God taking root in their life. And so watch this, when the roots can't develop, the plants are going to die and wither away. You say, why? Because they have no root, they got nothing to stabilize them, they got nothing to sustain them, they got nothing to strengthen them from the heat of the circumstances and situations that intensifies and the seed dies because it never had a chance in the first place to live. You still don't see it. So let me make it more identifiable for you. When afflictions and persecutions come on account of the word, because of their position as a believer, they fall apart. Affliction refers to the problems of life that come as a test of the depth of the doctrine. Persecution is opposition from others because of the word of God in you. You're going to have to deal with the enemy, and you're going to have to deal with some mean, weak, mean people. And if you ain't anchored in the word of God, all in all, this person was close to the gospel, but they never received the blessings or the benefit of the gospel that he had to offer. These are people that hear the message with great joy, but like the seed on the rocky soil, they do not let it take root. 
They seem to be happy to hear about Jesus and his love, but they don't let it sink into their hearts. And so on the outside, they express great enthusiasm, but on the inside, something's going on. Here's the third soul type, and I'll be done. Jesus identifies, this is his own story, as phony ground. It's right there in verse number seven. Mm -hmm. Others, and that's the seed, yeah. fell among the thorns. The thorns came up, yeah. choked them out. Mm -hmm. This is soil that is infested, it's overpopulated with thorns. Yes, how could that happen? Even though the tops of the thorn plants may have been cut off, there's a below surface that's unseen to the naked eye. <laughs> these thorns got a complex root system. Yeah. And, and what these thorns were known for doing is that they would dominate the soil. Y'all ain't walking with them. Yeah. And they would wrap themselves around other roots, and in the process, they would strangle them. Yeah. Yeah. These, these thorns grew up and they crowded out the plants. I wonder, are you walking with me? Yeah. That there's no room in the soil for two competing growths for them. One will live and the other will die. Yeah. One will overtake the other. And, and because the weeds grow stronger than the seed in this instance, as the weeds begin to grow and the thorns begin to thicken and get stronger, it has a way of finding itself and rubbing itself around the good seed and ain't but a matter of time before the good seed has been overtaken by the thorns. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus don't stop there. He goes on to tell the devastating conclusion. We run past it, but I want to stop you and get you to see the seriousness of it. Because these thorns, these wicked weeds, yeah. wrap themselves yeah. around the good seed and pulls everything out of it and strangles it. It doesn't applaud it and say, you go in. It doesn't say, I'm walking with you and I pray that God will help you. Uh-uh. No, that ain't, the way, that ain't the way it works. It seeks to get access to it. And once it gets access to it, it will not let it go until it takes everything away from it. Are yeah. y'all walking with me? Yeah. Brothers and sisters, Jesus says, but, but, but preacher, you got to tell them the rest of the story. Yeah. Because there are some devastating conclusions mm -hmm. that he says. Mm -hmm. And it yields, it brings forth yeah. no crime. No yeah. Eventually it dies. Yeah. You know, for those of us that are farmers, planters of seed, growers of gardens, we know the number one rule about pulling weeds yeah. is that you don't just go snatch it. <laughs> Got rid of them dandelions. Uh, give it a little time. Got, got rid of those crazy weeds. How, what you got to be to snatch them? If you have not pulled it up by the root. No, 
We ain't no Giddens. He been gone a long time. He was known for blue for being somebody who advertised on TV when they used to do the, the, the great nut brand cereal and he'd be out there just grabbing and eating stuff. Weeds don't produce fruit, but also weeds don't produce vegetables. Weeds are never productive. They are only destructive. All you gotta do is ask some of these gardeners in here. They will tell you, you ain't never had to go to the, 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 the place where you buy them plants or any other stuff. And, and, and you ain't never you ain't never seen nobody selling weed seeds. <laughs> I, I wish somebody would talk to me. <laughs> let, let me say this. Any, any, can, I, can I just talk to some gardeners in here today since everybody else has shut down on me? When you have planted the garden, you've got to get the ground right. Hello? Come on. Walk with me for a minute. You also know that you got to put the right fertilizer in. Come on, talk to me. You also know it's not just the birds of the air you got to worry about. It's some other things on the ground. You ever left your garden unattended for a few days? You ain't got to worry. I ain't going to come over and get your crops. A few days early, you got the weeds out. You come back several days later, leaving it unattended, leaving it to itself. And before you leave, you're like, what in the world? How did they get in here? Come here. How well do you attend your own life as a believer? I ain't talking about ground and dirt now. I'm talking about your walk with the Lord. I'm talking about your growth and maturity in God's word. Have you left it alone and it's been so long that there are so many weeds in it you don't even know where to start getting rid of them? I want to tell you, it ain't enough just to go to church to get the weeds out. No, ain't no magic up in here. It's a matter of you having to be on guard, on task, on target. Lord, don't let me fall prey to this. Lord, keep my mind, keep my mouth, keep my attitude. You know that you ain't careful. The weed of negativity will get a hold of it. The weed of complacency and complaining will get a hold of it. And if you ain't careful, you get used to it. Could that be the reason why our prayer life is so weak? Yeah. Because we got some weeds there. Mm-hmm. Could that be the reason why we are unproductive because we got weeds in our lives? Yeah. And where the difference lies is this, Brother Norm. In this parable, Jesus tells when it comes to the kind of weeds that are identified. Mm-hmm. He said the sower knows them. And he also knows the destructive power they possess. Yes, sir. But what about the weeds that we know are in our lives and we haven't taken serious consideration about? Yeah. Let me ask a couple questions and I promise you I'm out of here. How long have they been there? All right, yes. all right. How long have they been there and you know that they are there? Yeah. And why haven't you done something about it? Can I tell you... Don't expect the enemy to tell you about sin and demonic stuff. If anything, he will coax you. You grown, you can do whatever you want to do. He will celebrate your stubbornness. He will tell you you can decide whatever you want. Dig your heels in. Can no preacher, can nobody tell you what to do. He will tell you you can celebrate that you are stuck in your own way. I, if, I'm going to go, if I'm going to be stuck, I want to be stuck in his way. Yeah. And, if, and if I just got to be stuck, let me be stuck in your word. Let me be stuck in your will. 
could end up being like this. You ain't got to stay the way you are. You can talk about they can take it or leave it. So here's the driving question. What are you going to do to get rid of them? How long have they been there? Aren't you tired of them by now? The Lord has been speaking to you about you need to move away from. He's willing to help you. Yeah. Why won't you let him? And so since the Lord has made us aware that they are there, what are you going to do about them? You can't keep blaming other people for the way you live and the stuff you're doing, the places that you go. This ain't about being a robot. You make up your own mind. You're laid by your own desires and your own decisions. I want to say to you, choose well. Because the last question comes in one word, and that is when. You sit under the gospel Sunday after Sunday, Wednesday after Wednesday. When? When will the weeds of narrow mindedness get out of your life? What are you waiting on? Yes. 
Louis! 